Today's video is brought to you again by a service that is truly in the world but not of it, and that is fide.email, which is everything that big tech is not. Fide.email is private, secure, and 100% Catholic. You should check it out. Visit fide.email. That's the website, not .com, but .email, and see for yourself. That's fide, F-I-D-E-I, -E the Latin word for faith. You've probably heard the story that's making the rounds now about the L.A. Dodgers, how they invited a group of people cosplaying as nuns to mock the Catholic faith at some sports event that they were doing, and then how some Catholics spoke out against this, and that group of, of cosplayers, I guess, were disinvited by the Dodgers from the event only to have them then be re-invited and apologize for disinviting them because the group of people who were dressing up as nuns and mocking our faith were a part of the uh, James Martin crowd. You may be aware that we are approaching the month of the year where the secular world celebrates the first deadly sin. It's not really the secular world that does this, by the way. It's just the people who run the secular world because, as you've probably noticed by now, most normal people are out there are pretty tired of all this stuff. We really are. And there's a lot of details we could go into, but Taylor Marshall did a talk about this a couple nights ago, and he went over some of the details. I don't feel the need to repeat them here. There has just been a very basic question that people have had. And I saw a couple people ask this on Twitter, and I thought I'd go over this here. The question is this. Why is it the Catholic Church isn't doing anything? Why is it the Catholic, no Catholic officials are really speaking up about this? I'm sure by the time this goes live, somebody can point to an auxiliary bishop somewhere or a high-profile priest somewhere who has said something. But the question remains, why isn't the church doing something? And there's a twofold answer to that, at least, if not more. And the first is that, quite frankly, the Catholic Church, in the eyes of the secular authorities, has no credibility whatsoever on anything pertaining to morality. On Twitter, I saw a few high-profile Catholics tweeting about this, and they were getting responses out of nowhere from possibly possessed people, tweeting them all stories that had broken, like uh, the one here, I'll put the headline over there on the screen for you, about the Ted McCarrick problem in Illinois. Maybe we should call it the Cardinal Bernadine problem in, in Illinois, because it turned out over the years, a lot of those problems involving really wicked men who should never be allowed anywhere near the priesthood had those problems have been quietly swept under the rug. Bernadine being one of the ones guilty of this. For those of you who might be new to my channel and have fond memories of Cardinal Bernadine, Cardinal Bernadine was nothing like how he was portrayed by the media. And here's an inside tip for you. If the secular media is celebrating a ecclesiastical figure in the church, there's a good chance that that figure in the church is not who they're made out to be. That's just been the sad, sad reality over the last century or so. The more the secular world celebrates a bishop or a priest or anything like that, the worse they tend to be. That's the case. And this goes back to at least 2003 when the uh, that story out of Boston broke about the larger Ted McCarrick problem. But really, you know, when I was in high school in the 90s, I heard about this. People talked about it. It's just the media didn't and the system didn't talk about it. Not until 2003 when it, they just decided to let, all, let it all out for whatever reason. And many people have speculated what that reason was. But when the consequences of the uh, Ted McCarrick problem, or the Boston problem, or the Cardinal Bernadine problem, if you prefer, is that the church has no credibility in their eyes. The church has been defanged. How does that happen? Well, simple, because whenever a bishop does speak up about this, or a good priest does speak up about this, what happens? They get hammered over and over again by those in authority. It doesn't help that often state governments go after the church for these things, like we saw in Pennsylvania a couple of years ago. The church has surrendered the moral authority. And this has made more, even more of a problem when you have figures like Francis sitting on the throne of Peter, going on to Disney, doing documentaries there, where he, he is confronted essentially by young secularists, many of them, former Catholics, who have totally adopted the morality of the flesh of the secular world. 
And instead of correcting their errors on the James Martin sin, on associated ideologies related to it, and all other manner of things, including in internet indecency and the Moloch ritual, all these things that he has actually spoken about positively and in a Catholic way about, instead of defending the faith on this, he just smiles, he nods, and he says, thank you, I listened, I learned something from you. He surrendered to the world on this. So, of course, the L.A. Dodgers came out and just re-invited that group. What were they going? To, who was going to push back on them? There's another reason for this, though. And it's, this goes beyond simple animosity towards the faith. After all, the secular powers have had animosity towards the faith since the disillusion of Christendom at the Reformation. They've had... <laughs> there's another basic reason for this. And I saw this question also on Twitter. They said the L.A. Dodgers have a large Catholic fan base. Many Latino Catholics love the Dodgers. Why wouldn't they speak up? And then maybe a few have, but there's a basic answer to that question. Have people been more upset about this than, say, a certain beer company and their overreaches lately? They've gotten more animated about that and about a big box retailer doing what it does every year at this time of year. So I, I have to ask... Why are you surprised? The typical Catholic is lukewarm at best. The typical Catholic has greater loyalty to their low-grade nasty beer or to a big-box retailer than they do to the faith. And statistically speaking, most Catholics agree to some degree with the secular world on matters of the flesh, on these sins of the flesh. They simply do. That is unmistakable and undeniable, at least those who go to the so-called ordinary form. And a lot of people don't like it when I bring that up, but statistically, we've seen the data over and over and over again. The typical pew sitter in the Western world agrees with the secular world on all these matters and disagrees with the formal teachings of the church on so many matters that the typical pew sitter is at least a material heretic. That's just the fact. Except when you go to a traditional parish of some kind, whether that is a traditional Latin Mass or a Eastern Rite parish, you know, Byzantine or something. And then people there tend to actually have the Catholic faith and that have the Catholic understanding of the sins of the flesh. These liturgical wars that we dance around and we argue about have real consequences. And one of these thing, consequences is when the secular world mocks the church. It would be wonderful if... Well, we're talking Los Angeles, so we, uh, Archbishop Gomez, I think, or maybe even Cardinal McElroy of San Diego stood up and said, no. But they can't do that. Disregarding what good Archbishop Gomez may or may not have done, Cardinal McElroy has publicly come out and called for the changing of the church's teachings on these sins, just like most of the laity have. So, of course... The secular world won't listen to the church because the church doesn't have a coherent position anymore. At least, the institutional church doesn't. The ape of the church doesn't. I have a video that was going to originally going to go live before this weekend, but it'll probably happen now on Saturday, about defining what the ape of the church is, what it really is, and what it means. And I invite you to watch that, because I use the term ape of the church, and I, I haven't defined it in a while, but you should really watch that to understand what it is we're talking about here. Because at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself a basic question. How many of the members of the hierarchy are actually Catholic? And I'm not saying, you know, committing gross sins necessarily excommunicates someone from the church, although there are certain ones that apparently do. But you have to ask yourself this. Would men who sweep the Ted McCarrick issue under the rug, or men like Ted McCarrick, were they Catholic? Men who sold the church out to the world, are they Catholic? These things have consequences, and that's why a Major League Baseball team with a huge Latino fan base knows they'll get away with this. It is as simple as that. You can't expect anything else from them. I'm surprised at all that any major retailers or big businesses are right now considering scaling back what they do during first at least in month. Because there are some. But that's because people have more loyalty to their material goods than they do to the faith. Under, when you understand that, when you see what that means, when you really understand what that means, you start to feel very lonely. 
Maybe if Catholics, in a united way, informed Major League Baseball that they were going to turn off the games, something would be done. But it's not going to happen. Because most Catholics won't watch a message like this, or they'll think anybody speaking like me is a, is a nut, and that we need to listen to more like Francis, who is a luminous pope sent by God directly to bring the church into the modern world. And if you believe that, you should go to confession. Because it means you believe that the church has been wrong on these issues. That the truth can change with the calendar. The truth doesn't change with the calendar. The morality of the church and the truth of the deposit of the faith does not change with the calendar. Pick a side. Is it going to be Mammon in the secular world? Or is it going to be Christ the King? I know who I choose. If you like messages like this, consider supporting this work on Patreon or Subscribestar. Links in the description box below. I do thank the patrons of this channel for their continued support of Return to Tradition. It is greatly appreciated. And then it allows me to drop what I'm doing and do messages like this as these stories develop. Sources today can be found at returntotradition.org. You'll see a little banner on the lower left-hand side of my screen that shows you the website. Just look for the post with today's links or put today's video title on it, and you can find the links there. I hope you found this helpful and useful to understanding why it is that they can do this. And it's the simple answer. Because most Catholics don't care that much, including about the faith. If they did, confession lines would be longer. It's just, that's really as simple as that. Like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So does sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.